Hey guys, welcome to a tutorial which is going to be about WPF, Windows Presentation Foundation. Now I thought to myself that uh, uh, there are plenty of tutorials which show you how to make web applications and websites and all those things, but we don't have as many tutorials which show you what WPF is all about and what is the power of this technology, which is relatively new compared to other things that we have going on in the market. So today we'll be using the IDE. Uh, Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate and it's all going to be about the basic steps about WPF the very basic foundation that you need to know about WPF and the basic components that it uses so uh, the steps are going to be the same irrespective of whether you're using 2008 2010 or even 2012 so you need to go to file new project in that you'll see Visual C Sharp and I guess C Sharp in uh, 2008 so just go to Visual C Sharp, you'll have WPF application. Go down here, just change the name to WPF underscore demo. You can keep whatever name you want. But as you see, I'm not that creative, so I'm just going to go with WPF underscore demo. Okay. So after you do this, there are the three most important things that you need to know about WPF in general. And the number one thing is the designer view that you get over here. Uh, you get this beautiful designer view which shows you how your window is going to look. Now WPF is mostly used for making uh, standalone Windows application. It can also be used for making you know embedded uh, applications which are on the web or even services. But right now the, our main concentration is uh, Windows applications that you can use on any Windows OS. So you get this designer view which will show you what your WPF window is going to look like. The most important thing for any WPF uh, programmer would be the XAML. The XAML is just like HTML. It has certain tags using these certain tags and certain properties which are attached to these tags. You can design your window to look a certain way and you can add functionality to it as well. So as you can see right now the window is empty so we don't have anything. Uh, you have the basic properties of the window which has been defined for the window tag and obviously you can just change it to say WPF underscore demo underscore main very very creative I have to say okay so uh, instead of going to, into the designing part today or in this tutorial we'll be making a entire tutorial about the WPF designing because there are lots of things that you need to know and there are a lot of ways which you can design a WPF window and it's a lot of fun if you really know how to utilize the different tags that they offer and the order in which you, you use them so it's a lot of fun so these are the two important things when it comes to designing but when it comes to functionality you obviously have your .cs file. Now it's .cs because we have chosen C Sharp as our back coding. It will be .db if you choose uh, Visual Basic as your back coding. It's as simple as that. So as you can see you have the main window.xaml and you have the main window.xaml.cs. This is quite similar to the ASPX extension that we have in ASP.NET which has the suppose uh, xyz.aspx file which will be your designer with the HTML attached and the xyz.aspx.cs file which will have the back coding. Now as you can see over here it is uh, using certain default uh, uh, containers and uh, you have the namespace for your project WPF underscore demo and you have a, obviously a public partial class main window which is the same name as your window. So, uh, just forget about this constructor for the time being because we're not going to be using it right now. What we're going to do is we're just going to put in, suppose, like a few buttons and uh, I'll just show you uh, how the WPF window looks like once you run the project. Okay, so we'll just take in, we'll go to toolbox now. As with all the .NET projects, you have your toolbox, your solution explorer, team explorer if you're connected to a team server, and all those other things that you have as added advantages. Okay, so the toolbox, just go to all WPF controls and just 
drag a button and you can put it on the designer or you can also put it in the XML it does not matter so you can give a name to this button say BTN test and if you want to show the content that is the text of the button its content property just set it to say TST test now as you'll see the entire button is occupying the entire window that does not look good and that does not serve a purpose so you're just gonna resize it make it smaller not entirely smaller but make it a real little, little smaller beautiful now you'll see that I'm able to drag it and place it wherever I want to and you'll see the margin property is getting auto set over here so that is fantastic oh oops okay so that is fantastic because uh, you can then you know design your form any way you want to so I'll just place it in the right hand corner now I'll take one more text box rather than a button and there are two options over you have a text block and a text box text block is used uh, usually to display a huge amount of text which can then be put in a scroll pane and you'll be able to scroll it but we don't need that much text right now so we're just gonna take a text box we'll give it a name say txt text and obviously we'll add a content to it oh sorry this one does not have context is that it has text so we'll write in test data that is again beautiful now as you'll see the entire text box is taking the entire window we don't want that just shorten it as I told you before we'll be talking about uh, talking about designing your window in the next uh, session because that is going to be a very really extensive tutorial because there are a lot of things that you can do over there now one simple step is to take the button and on click of the button we are going to change the text of this text uh, box so it's going to be simple just go to button and if you don't know the name of the uh, event then what you can do is you can just go to properties of the button and just click on events and you get all the events that are listed over here and you can just uh, if you have a function written out common function to attach to all the events all you can do is just copy paste that functions name in any event that you want to but we'll just go with the traditional way we don't need to go that fast track way right now so we'll say on mouse uh, double click or even single click it does not matter so I'm just gonna go with double click and you'll see that if you don't have a function already defined you will get this uh, new event handler which will define the function for you so as you will see it is using the name of the button underscore mouse double click now you'll be thinking where does this uh, function you know go where does it uh, exist well it exists in C sharp so as you'll see the function has been created over here and now whatever you write in this function will be triggered when you double click on this button now I know double click is a odd choice but it's just you know a demo you can do whatever you want to so what we need to do is we need to take an instance of this text box and then change its property of text so I'm just gonna write txt test dot text equal to test complete now what will this do is when I run this form it is going to register this button and its event of mouse double click with this particular function and that function will be fired once I double click on the button and the text box which is available to me over here will be changing its text property to test complete it's gonna be that simple so you can run it by pressing F5 or the play button over here and as you'll see over here we have this beautiful little one window and uh, WPF applications runs on your Windows OS so whatever you use uh, it's gonna look like that I'm using Windows 7 64 bit and it is that is why we are getting the Windows 7 interface window over here now I'm just gonna click double click on this and as you'll see the text box has changed its text property 
to test complete. Now just close that window and it will start stop debugging and it's that simple. So we have made our first basic demo of our WPF uh, application and I hope you learned a lot and I will require comments and shares and likes and all those things so that I can understand what we need to proceed with in our next tutorials. So hopefully to see you next time around and hopefully to teach you more things about WPF and uh, if you have any any response, any views, any anything that you need to talk to me about, you can always uh, leave a comment be below the window and we'll see what we can do about it. So thank you for watching and have a